Hello, YouTube. Evil Twin X back again for episode number 20 of my Atlas Lathe restoration. And today we're going to be tackling the power plant of the lathe. Uh, if you remember, uh, my lathe did come with uh, a motor. It was actually a nice size motor. This bad boy, which I call the uh, angry pig. It looks like a big angry pig. Uh, the only problem with this motor is that this capacitor actually interferes with the way I'm mounting it now. The previous owner had this mounted on a bench top and I am mounting my lathe on the original cast iron legs and I have a clearance issue. <clears throat> Another issue with this motor is that this motor mount seemed to, part of this motor mount seemed to have snapped off and somebody tried to weld it back on and did a pretty crappy job, but I only have half a motor mount. So the power's there. It's a three quarter horsepower motor. It's just, it doesn't fit. Well, pick this cute little motor up on off of Craigslist for $10. It uh, does feel very period. It's a GE. See if I can get you in there. So I like the look of it. And the only bummer about it is that it's only a quarter HP. This is a little small, but I figured I needed something to get me going. So the motor does have a couple of issues. One, uh, I did like that it had this on off switch because. Uh, on the original lathe, the motor, all they do, they're on an off switch, was just pulling a plug in and out of the outlet, and I didn't want that. Uh, so this has an on off switch that uh, I would rewire. Uh, second, let me see if I can get some better lighting on here. It is all messed up. In fact, it was running when I bought it. We plugged it in and it was nice and quiet. And when I got home to try and test it out, I think uh, I have some exposed wiring there and they were touching and blew blew my fuse in the, in the garage. It scared the crap out of me. So I'll need to rewire, put new wiring in here. Another issue I need to figure out is that this pulley is a lot narrower the width of this is much thinner than that and those link belts that i have even if i get the smaller size i don't know if they'll necessarily fit in that so i have a couple of things i need to work around not gonna let that stop me so gonna get started all right well the first thing i gotta do is tackle disassembling this mess in here of wires so i'm just gonna get to it All right, I didn't want to bore you watching, um, having you watch me take this apart, which was a bit of a pain. This uh, this nun in here, this nun in here was cross-threaded, and it was a little tough getting it off. But you can see how foobarred the wires are, and yeah, look at that all in there. No wonder why blew a fuse in my garage. Now I really only know the basics of uh, electrical work and this kind of doesn't make sense to me so I'll just point it out so here's the black wire uh, so here's the white the white was to here and the black didn't go to here uh, the black actually went to the light switch and then there was this other white that went from here, went from here to the light switch. So, I don't know, I don't know, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, but I'll do a little research online. And I also want to get a plug, a three-prong three plug that has a ground 
in it. And I think I would just, let's say, just screw the ground into, let's say, somewhere over here. Uh, but once again, I will have to double check that. Next thing to deal with, I think, is going to be this pulley. Uh, in this bunch of supplies that I received when I bought the lathe, there was a metal box and it had a lot of extra uh, bits and pieces in it. And one of the things I did find was this pulley and this groove diameter or um, width matches what's already on the lathe. Uh, so now I just got to get this off. Also, the diameter of this hole seems to be about the same. Uh, so I got to get this pulley off. I already moved, removed the set screw, but I've been having a, uh, it's like this is not sliding off. I had sprayed this with WD-40 and let it sit over overnight. Um, I've been tapping it with a mallet and it just won't come loose. Uh, I really can use a, a gear puller, which I don't have, but I did find that I had this in my supplies. Uh, it's something to do with uh, faucet puller kit. So it looks just like a gear puller. So I'm going to give this a try. Well, that worked. So I'm gonna clean out the bore of this and uh, see, see if it'll fit on. Some of the uh, supplies that I bought, uh, a nine foot extension cord with the uh, open end so I can wire it up. I bought a couple of uh, these uh, oops, butt slices and uh, both blue and red and same thing with uh, these spade terminals both in blue and red. This is a new faceplate I bought, new switch. Uh, this is not a car switch, this actually came from Clausing. Um, so that's good to go and this little it's like a little piece of cardboard but it was labeled insulator on the uh, exploded diagram and uh, got that so oh <clears throat> and I got a little bit extra wire so I'm gonna I'm just gonna get a crack of lacking and wire this up hopefully I don't fry myself so since I know very little about wiring I did a little bit of research and it is pretty simple. Um, basically, the two-prong toggle switch interrupts the black hot power that goes from the outlet to the motor. So this is what I drew up, um, and that's how I'm going to wire everything. So fingers crossed. Okay, I just did a temporary wiring. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I got the power and the common in the right spot before I go ahead and wire in the um, the on off switch uh, when I reviewed the video the white wire was on top and that went into the uh, went to the switch on and off so you know usually black is oops black is the power or the hot wire and white is the common uh, but they had the um, they had the wire going from here going into the old switch so I'm pretty sure that that is the hot so I'm just gonna uh, put that back in and test this out and I'll probably have a flashlight handy in case I blow a fuse and the lights go out um, and 
Honestly, I don't know if, if these are reversed. Would that make a difference? Would that make the motor go backwards? Or would I blow a fuse? Or will I even know? I have no idea. But I'm going to test this out once I reattach that hot wire. All right, boys and girls. I got my uh, flashlight handy just in case I blow a fuse. Uh, but here we go. Fingers crossed. Alright. She's running. Nice and quiet. I'm pretty sure that is clockwise. That is it. So I'm gonna splice the hot and put the on off switch in now okay well i spliced the uh the black and i wired it to the switch and i just wrapped some um, electrical tape around this just uh, temporarily so i don't shock myself so i'm going to plug it in and let's see what happens okay i just plugged it in the motor's not on, so here we go. I hear a motor running. All right. I'm gonna flip the switch off. There we go. All right. Learned a little bit about uh, electrical work. So now I just got to clean up all these wires and uh, wire the switch and mount it over here. So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay. I uh, took a while to sneak these wires through because the hole on the opposite side is down and a tiny little um, opening, but I managed to do that. And just for safety's sake, I put some electrical tape around this. Now I did order, this is called an insulator. Go figure. It, it was on the uh, parts list. So I ordered it thinking that it was just something special. But it's actually just like a little piece of paper. But I think uh, you slide it on here and that's to help prevent the, the contacts from touching the metal. So since I have it, I'm going to put it on there. My nice new on and off switch. See if it works. So she runs really quiet. Uh, there is a little bit of vibration, but not much. And I did make one bit of good news. I thought I would have to fabricate a new mounting plate, but uh, after putting this on here just for p position only, these holes do line up, so I won't have to do that. So you think I would be tempted to throw a belt on, tighten, put some bolts down here and tighten it up and throw, put a, a belt on and run the lathe. But there are a few things that I still need to do. And then I could put the belt on here and finally run some power to this. So I'm really happy. This looks great. It works. I didn't fry myself and the lights are still on in the garage. Uh, so one more step, one step so close everybody, I'm so close. All right guys, thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for all the positive comments. Um, there's still more to come and soon this thing will be up and running and I'll be making some chips. Happy with the progress? Evil Twin X, signing off.